Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope that you all are fine and you are great. And thank you everyone for participating in this webinar. So today the topic which is, uh, it is getting started with NLP organized by IEEE WIEFGWUEG. I am Neha Hafiz, chairperson of IEEE WIEFGWU. And today we have an honorable guest speaker named Usman Khan, who is an ML NLP engineer, a Microsoft certified trainer, and a technical lead on MLSA Islamabad, will be enlightening us all on the uh, mentioned uh, uh, agenda like we mailed you, and I'm going to repeat it. Uh, it was like we are going to have a discussion on uh, machine learning, NLP, and uh, as we have played the game in the, our previous session on Kahoot. So again, we are going to have that interesting game with us. Also, uh, if you guys have any query, feel free to ask you and mute yourself. Or if you have, uh, if you do not have uh, an option of uh, unmuting, then you may uh, use the text box for uh, your queries, and it will be entertained. It is request to maintain the, uh, it is request to maintain uh, the discipline. And uh, now I would like Usman uh, Khan. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Swan and I'm very happy to have you all here. Uh, just can you guys confirm, uh, can you guys hear me properly? Uh, you was clear, Yes, sir. OK, great. So uh, Neha already uh, introduced me uh, to you. And I'm just going to go over some things uh, about myself again. Uh, I'm Aswan Khan, and I'm a beta Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. And I'm a machine learning engineer in NLP. And I'm also the GDSE lead for NAML and the technical lead for MLSA Islamabad. So that was uh, sort of an introduction from my side. And then uh, moving on to the topic of this. <clears throat> event. Uh, we're going to talk about NLP. Uh, what even is NLP? And even before that, we need to learn something about machine learning because there are a lot of people who don't know anything about machine learning. So don't worry, just hang on tight and we're going to discuss everything here. Now you might be thinking, okay, what even is machine learning? Well, you can understand uh, what you can understand about machine learning is that machine learning is this process uh, in which you build models that can understand and predict patterns in text, numerical, visual data. Uh, like you're teaching a child uh, to either write something, read something, or those sort of things. Uh, that is the same thing with machine learning. You are basically teaching uh, the computer how to uh, learn patterns and other things. And one of the main differentiating factor between machine learning and uh, like sort of, I wouldn't say machine learning, but it is like sort of machine learning. Uh, people used to refer if else as a uh, machine learning uh, back in the days. Like if uh, you want to do this, uh, then do this. Otherwise do some other task. Uh, that can be considered as machine learning, but it was used back in the 90s. So I wouldn't consider that machine learning. And there are a lot of memes out there which refer uh, if else as machine learning. Anyhow, uh, machine learning itself is uh, like sort of an equation uh, in which you optimize the parameters. But to cut things short uh, in a no man's term, uh, you can like state machine learning as a process uh, in which you build models that can understand uh, patterns in text, numeric, and visual data. Now, moving forward, uh, what sort of machine learning, uh, like what types of machine learning do we have? We have supervised machine learning, and supervised machine learning is uh, again uh, divided into two parts. One is regression, and the other is classification. And you can understand regression uh, like anything that is of numeric value. Let's say I want to predict uh, what will be the score of Pakistan's cricket 
crooked team uh, in the next match. Obviously, uh, it's going to be some numeric value. Uh, it's going to be a continuous value. Uh, so we can label that uh, as a regression task. But let's say I want to label uh, what will be the stock prices uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Those sort of things are considered uh, in the regression part of machine learning. Uh, anything that let me like sort of visualize it for you. Like anything that is of numerical value and it's uh, not in the form of uh, rounded digits or not in discrete manner, you can label it as a regression. And uh, coming back to this thing, what does this mean? What is supervised? Uh, the supervised machine learning uh, can be described as any machine learning model in which you you specify the training examples. Let's say you're teaching a kid something. Uh, you have a child and he's learning about shapes. Uh, you give him a drawing which is in the form of square, circle, or a triangle, and then like uh, you tell him that this is a triangle, this is a rectangle, this is a circle, and then the child learns on its own. And then if he sees anything that is uh, similar to uh, that is uh, similar to those shapes that he recognized earlier, he will label that as uh, its respective shape. Uh, like he, uh, if you show a kid uh, that an egg is like sort of a circle, uh, he will label everything uh, with that shape as a circle or as a ball or whatever. Uh, so that's the exactly the same thing uh, how machine uh, machines learn. And that is uh, what we basically mean by supervised machine learning. Uh, when you're training the model, you also assign some uh, label examples. Uh, let's say I'm saying uh, this shape, we have a shape with one, two, three, four values. And then at the end, we have one label that this is a ball. And then we have another example called three, four, five, six. And then we label it as a triangle. And then you feed it into your machine learning model and the model will automatically recognize that this is uh, a triangle and this is a circle. And in the future, if you pass anything to the model without even passing the label, it will recognize that based on the data that it learned from. So that's what regression and supervised learning is all about. And now moving on to um, classification. OK, uh, one more thing. Let me just. I'm adding uh, like sort of a poll here, and in case you have any sort of a question or if something is not clear to you, just uh, ask it in the chat and we're going to answer it. It should be visible in uh, the chat. OK. So again, if you have any question that uh, or something that is not clear to you, or if you want me to go slowly or anything, you can just uh, mention it in the chat and we will follow suit. OK, so moving on to classification. What is classification? Uh, let's say you're going out for grocery shopping. You're going out to buy some things for yourself or for your household and now you have divided uh, your household stock into a few categories like let's say vegetables and fruits uh, there are two categories right uh, you have vegetables and you have fruits and then you have dry fruits and so on and so forth you might have different categories so uh, in any machine learning task in which we're dealing with any sort of categories that is labeled as a classification uh, Another example of this uh, would be. Let's say I want to classify you guys that whether you are a student of computer sciences or whether you are a student of software engineering and that task would be uh, a classification task 
And if I wanted to predict your grades, like uh, what will be your CGPA in the future, that would be uh, labeled under regression because that's a numeric value and the other one is uh, category and so on and so forth. OK, so moving on to the uh, second type, unsupervised. Uh, if you recall, uh, we previously said that we have to pass a labeled data uh, to our machine learning model uh, that learn from it. Uh, but what if we don't have that labeled data? Let's say I'm. I'm training a model in which it recognizes uh, whether you have a coronavirus Delta variant or not. Uh, since as you might know, Delta variant is the new variant, so we don't have much information on that. So we don't have a training set on which we can train our machine learning model on. OK, so what will we do in that case? Uh, we will resort to some other machine learning uh, algorithms. Uh, now this problem statement will come under unsupervised learning because now we don't have any labeled uh, data. Uh, like we do know that uh, like we have all the features uh, like I explained earlier, we have one, two, three, four and three, four, five, six, like whatever the features are, but we don't know what is what and what is what. So what will we do is we will resort to some unsupervised algorithms and what those unsupervised algorithms do is like they have different techniques of recognizing uh, recognizing patterns. So uh, what they do is uh, one of the examples of unsupervised learning could be clustering. And clustering can be defined as let's say we have these data points. If you plot all of the data that we have here, with all of the respective features. Uh, the features are uh, like whatever value we have for each column. Like I explained it in uh, the supervised part that we would have uh, um, like features uh, such as one, two, three, four. These are just arbitrary names. It can be anything else. So if you have uh, those sort of things, you can plot them uh, to a graph as well. Now. Uh, after plotting this, uh, you can see that we have two distinct uh, groups. These are closer together and these are closer together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to. Encircle this group and this group. And this will this all will be done automatically. You don't have to do anything. Uh, the machine learning model will handle everything, but you need to provide uh, a good quality of data. So anyhow, uh, like after plotting these uh, data points here, uh, we can clearly see that these are uh, like divided into uh, their own separate groups. And uh, after these are uh, like segregated into their own separate groups, our machine learning model will return that we have two uh, different like sort of clusters. Uh, these are called clusters. OK. And uh, now what we have done is let's say there are two types of uh, Delta variant of coronavirus uh, and our model has successfully recognized all of the different uh, like variants based on the patterns. Uh, now uh, the point pointer here is you did not provide any labels for it. The machine learning model did not learn that this is a triangle, this is a circle and so on and so forth. It automatically recognized that this is a circle, this is a triangle and uh, based on their similarities, uh, it put all of them together. So this is called clustering and then we have dimensionality reduction. Uh, this is sort of a very complex topic. Uh, but I will just uh, like briefly define it. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are going to have some features such as one, two, three, four, which are columns respectively in your data set. So uh, sometimes we have a really huge data set and we don't have the resources uh, which will enable us to train our model because sometimes model even takes around 
32 plus uh, gigs of RAM and it requires a huge GPU and like it's requ it requires uh, a really uh, good chunk of resources. So you can't do anything in those uh, in that sense. So what you can do is you can uh, reduce your uh, data set size and one of the techniques that we use uh, to uh, reduce the size of our data is by reducing the number of features like we have columns. Uh, imagine an Excel spreadsheet in your head and we have columns in that. And each column represents a feature. Let's say we have 100 columns and our like let's say laptop can't handle uh, like that huge of a data. Uh, so what do you do? You uh, pass it through a dimensionality reduction algorithm. Uh, one of the prime examples is PCA. Anyhow, uh, after passing it into this algorithm, dimensionality reduction, uh, what will it do? It will basically uh, reduce all of those 100 columns into either 50 or 60, depending upon how much threshold you set. And basically what it does is it checks each column. Uh, let's say you have a data set about cats and you want to classify whether an image is a cat or not. So what sort of things are important in that? Uh, it's uh, like size is important. It's uh, hair type is important. If it, uh, if it has long hair, short hair, and it's uh, like number of legs is important. And, uh, let's say number of eyes, tail, and so on and so forth. These are the things that are, which are important. And there might be something uh, which are not important, such as age. Do you know why? Because a dog and a cat both might be 10 years old. How is that feature going to make a difference in our machine learning model? Whether a cat is 10 months old or a dog is 10 months old, it does not make a difference. So dimensionally, uh, dimensionality reduction algorithm, what it does is it removes such features which do, do not improve or uh, like we do not improve our model. It just gets rid, uh, get rid of that. So uh, that's the dimensionality reduction. Now moving on to reinforcement learning. This is the third type. And this is the thing that uh, everyone on YouTube and everyone on uh, like on the TV is talking about uh, the new AI. Um, like these are the things which uh, is being talked about because in this uh, you're talking about self-driving cars, uh, you're talking about automated machine robotics, and this is a really a huge domain. And this is a very difficult domain as well. You need a lot of resources in this domain. And this, uh, like the third type, is a collection of supervised and unsupervised algorithm as well as semi-supervised algorithm. I haven't mentioned those here, but uh, that is a separate topic itself. Okay, so uh, what this reinforcement learning does? Uh, what it basically does it uh, is it makes real-time decisions. Let's say you all have heard about Tesla, right? Elon Musk's company. Uh, it has it is really famous for uh, self-driving cars. And what it does is, if you're driving on a car and you've come across a sharp right turn, and now the system has to decide whether to go right or go straight or go left. So what the algorithm does is based on whatever the data it is being trained on. Okay, uh, like whatever the data um, it was trained on, it will make that decision. So it is related to real time decisions like we were making clusters uh, in unsupervised learning and you can clearly see that this is not related to any real life scenario, but reinforcement learning is like the real life impl implication of things. And it is based on reward and punishment model. Uh, what it basically does is when you're training the model, like you have a child and he wants to touch some hot water. Obviously, you know that if he's going to touch that hot water, his hand is going to get burned. Uh, but you stop him uh, time and time again, uh, but still he has us to touch that water. And once he touched 
touches that water, uh, either he is going to get beaten up by his parents, and he is going to pain. Uh, he is going to feel the pain himself as well. So, uh, in both ways, he is going to recognize that there is a punishment for doing bad things. So, it will automatically learn that I do not have to do this thing. And for the other thing, reward. Let's say he scores. He got first position in in his class. Obviously, that is a moment of uh, proud for uh, the parents and for the child. So he's going to get for it, maybe uh, a gift or something else. So he knows that if he does good things, he will be going to get awarded. So reinforcement learning uh, works on this model. And uh, the same is the case with uh, machine learning, like self-driving cars were initially trained on like empty roads and those sort of things and it first did not know that if it has to turn right or left it like grows straight through into the houses and then it realized no this is not a good thing this is a bad thing this is punishment so uh, then it set its uh, mind that i do not have to go straight in this case then it tests on uh, the left path and then eventually on the right path and then it will see that the right path is the actual path that it needs to go so there will be a reward at the end of it so it is going to recognize that i have to go this way okay so moving forward this is an illustration uh, which will help you uh, recognize uh, what is reinforcement learning what is unsupervised learning and what is uh, supervised learning as you can see, one of the prime examples of classification is identity fraud, image classification, customer retention, and diagnostics. And one of the uh, and few regression examples are advertising popularity prediction, weather forecasting, market forecasting. We already talked about that, about the stock market, and estimating life expectancy and population growth. And all of the other things are mentioned here as well. Okay, so. Moving on and now coming back to the topic of myths in machine learning. Uh, now I come across like unusual things and unusual comments and unusual messages every now and then people are asking absurd questions. You like genuinely laugh about it. Now one of the prime uh, question that I get is you need a lot of math for machine learning. And this is the meme that represents the situation of students. You're heading off to understand machine learning, and then you're hit by a car, and you, and that car is mathematics. So let me talk uh, a few points on uh, this question. You do not need a lot of math in machine learning, and so on. But that does not mean that you don't need any math. And that does not mean that you need to be the topper of your class. Uh, you need to top mathematics in your class to be recognized as a machine learning engineer. No, you need to understand math. Understanding math and uh, getting high marks in math is two entirely different things. Um, two entirely different things. Uh, if you're getting a first GPA, and 100% marks in mathematics, that does not mean that you're good in mathematics. You need to test yourself out. Uh, that is not a criteria on selecting if you're uh, good in maths or bad in maths. Um, go on Google, uh, try different uh, real life problems. Like uh, you might have seen some problem statements in interviews, uh, solve those out. You'll understand that if you understand maths or not, all you need is understanding of mathematics. You don't need to like start uh, deriving all of the equations and it becomes a two page uh, equation. And no, you're not going to be facing anything like that. So you need to chill out. Uh, you do not need a lot of math, but you do, do need the understanding of math. That is really, really important. Now, another on the extreme end, uh, there are a lot of people who are saying you do not need maths at all. Like what I said that you need uh, maths, but you need to understand it. You do not need to derive it or anything. And 
here we have uh, like those sort of people who say uh, you do not need maths at all. So they are wrong as well. What they do is when they start learning machine, uh, they start off uh, doing a course about machine learning. Uh, they like directly implement it. They directly start coding in it. And when they import TensorFlow STF, and then they start calling themselves as machine learning engineers. No, you're not a machine learning engineer if you're using only coding. You need to understand the problem statement first. You need to understand the mathematics first. Again, uh, you don't need a lot of maths, and you and and it's not and that uh, you. Uh, voice is repeating from someone. Uh, Neha, can you check uh, whose mic is on? Yes, sir. I'm trying to find out. Okay, got it. Okay, so uh, like, just don't be on the extreme ends of anything. Don't be one of those people who say that you need a lot of math, and don't be one of those people who say you don't need maths at all. Math is important. You are creative with that. You are very technical with maths, and these things are required. But again, uh, as I said earlier, uh, you don't need a four GPA to define yourself uh, as good in maths. Go on to Google, go on to YouTube, solve some problems. And once you start solving some problems, you're going to know for yourself if you, you are good in maths or not. Do not let uh, your marks be the judging criteria that uh, you need to be good or bad at maths. OK. So moving forward. These, this is, yeah. Uh, sir, if we talk about maths, we can talk about what type of maths we can talk about. Okay. If we talk about maths, basically, as much as you have studied in college life, that is enough. Like linear algebra, you deal with matrices and calculus. In calculus, you have obviously, uh, uh, like, uh, derivatives and those sort of things. Uh, you've obviously gone through all of those things, right? Uh, you've done integration in your intermediate. You've done uh, integration and derivatives uh, in your university life as well. So that is all that you need to do. Um, that is more than enough. But since uh, we don't remember a lot of our maths classes, since we find it irritating, so you might need to revise those things. But the main thing you're going to come across is either calculus, uh, linear algebra, or uh, statistics. And another thing was integration, yeah. But most of uh, these things would be from uh, statistics and uh, like linear algebra. And this is the example. This is what you need to do. And don't be like this. Don't directly uh, like learn Python and then go on to machine learning. This is the path that you need to follow. Data structures and algorithm. Although these are not that significant in machine learning, but it's good to know. If you know it, well and good. But if you don't know it, um, you don't necessarily have to uh, like follow it in specifically machine learning. But data structures and algorithms are really important for interviews. You cannot miss that because even if you're uh, being interviewed as a front end developer or a back end developer or a machine learning engineer, you are being uh, you are going to be asked questions about data structures and algorithms. So uh, you have to learn that and then problem solving. Do learn about problem solving as well. Uh, as I said earlier, do not make your marks or GPA the judging criteria that you're good in something or bad is some bad in something. Uh, your exams and those sort of things are the test of your memory, not your intelligence. So uh, go on to Google, go on to YouTube, uh, search a few things and start implementing them. Uh, solve real life problems and that's the thing that you need to do. And then you need to focus on discrete structures as well. And this is important as well. And calculus, I've already mentioned that, and statistics. Statistics is important. This is very important. Like if you want to go towards data science, 
that is entirely based off of statistics. Like the old name of data science was uh, statistician. Uh, it was later changed on to data science. So uh, yeah, this is the path and do not hop over these steps. Go over step by step and you eventually you will reach the top. And another thing, another myth that we get is there are a lot of jobs for machine learning engineers. OK, especially uh, this is a very critical topic uh, because most of the people that do machine learning is because they either want a job in machine learning or they think they, this is the highest paying job or those sort of things. So uh, let me clarify and uh, there are not a lot of jobs for machine learning engineers, especially in Pakistan. Uh, do you know why? Because the market is very saturated. Uh, because in every ad you see that uh, they are emphasizing you that uh, machine learning and data science is the highest paid job. So everyone is learning machine learning and everyone is learning Python. So the industry is coming up with one or two jobs uh, every, let's say, month or so, and the applicants are very high. The number of applicants is very, very high. So you're going to have a tough competition, but that does not change the fact that it is a very, very uh, like interesting field. You're not going to get bored in it. And another like myth that I wanted to break is the people that are currently learning machine learning are either these sort of people or these sort of people. These are the people that are coming in the market right now. So if you follow these uh, like simple steps, which I explained uh, to you, like uh, start off with Python, then learn data structures, problem solving, discrete structure, calculus, statistics, and then move to machine learning, you're going to be successful and you're going to get a job because in the interview, when they are going to ask you questions that are uh, related to um, like real life situations, you're going to be better equipped uh, than your counterparts because they were just import developers, import TensorFlow and import PyTorch, and but you are going to succeed in that because you learned all of those steps. You worked hard for it, so uh, do not be hopeless. Uh, there are jobs, but uh, there is a lot of struggle as well. You need to like work on machine learning a lot uh, before getting hired. And you don't like there's also a misconception that uh, you have to have experience for a, for an internship and for an internship you. They don't hire you because you don't have an experience. So uh, what you need to do is build projects for yourself. Like uh, let's say I explained uh, a few projects uh, earlier like stock market analysis and. Uh, face detection and classification. Just build those algorithms. These are not difficult to code. Uh, just build them, put them over to GitHub, deploy them, and put them onto your resume. And you are going to get called in for an interview, and you are definitely going to get hired. I will be talking uh, about resume writing in the future as well, but for now, uh, these are the things that you need to follow. Okay, so let me summarize it for you. That you. Uh, don't be one of these people. Don't be a guy who just imports stuff and does stuff. He doesn't know what is going on in the back end. Don't be the guy or the person who skips all of these things and doesn't know a thing about calculus statistics. Um, so don't be that guy. But again, uh, you don't have to be a master of calculus, master of statistics. Just understand it. You should understand how things work. OK, now another thing that you need a PhD for machine learning. No, you don't. Uh, your experience is greater than your educational degree. There is a certain position in which you uh, in which they hire PhDs, but for now and in Pakistan, uh, you don't need a PhD. OK. Another thing that you need to be a CS major to be an ML engineer, because I've seen uh, a lot of people criticizing people from electrical engineering, uh, people from BBA and all of those other departments that you can't be an ML engineer. Thing is you can and 
they are no one to stop you. If you want to be anything, Google and YouTube is your best friend. There are a lot of tutorials there. Just follow them and be what you want to be. Just put in the effort and may make it happen. So uh, like you don't need to be a CS major or the software, uh, a software engineering major. Software engineering uh, major to be an ML engineer. You just need to be motivated enough and you just need to uh, work hard. And also uh, as we talked about mathematics a lot, uh, I like this is the fifth or sixth time I'm stating it. You don't need math and people who are good in maths are not born with that gift. So I've seen some of those people and I myself uh, I'm a hard worker like there are a lot of people who understand mathematics much better than me, but I did put in the effort. I did uh, like work hard for it and now eventually I understand mathematics better than the, those who were naturally born uh, with uh, like mathematical understanding. OK, now coming back to one of the major topics that is being discussed uh, in like universities and industry like what is the difference between ml that is uh, being used in academia and in the industry uh, now academia is i can say it is like how should i put it it's quite backwards as compared to the industry i would i know it's a bad term like saying it backwards but it is what it is uh, you know why? Because most of the researchers are working on researches which were done uh, like five to ten years ago. They're not working on the latest uh, things like in Pakistan especially and in the whole world as well. Uh, they are working. I'm not saying that researchers are not working on latest things, but there is a small number of those people. Most of those people are working on old uh, papers. Uh, they are usually three to four years back. And one of the good sides of academia is you're more. You have more freedom like you can do anything you want, like you're doing a project of machine learning and academia. Uh, and the professor has told you that follow this, this, this method. You have more freedom in that because your end goal is to improve. Uh, let's say improve uh, accuracy or introduce a new technique of machine learning. So you can do uh, like you can implement it by anything, uh, something that you come across which is giving better results, show it to your professor and he'll happily accept it. Uh, he'll go along with it. But if you're in the industry and your project manager has told you that you have to complete this machine learning algorithm by this specific uh, method, you're like you have to do it in that specific manner. You don't have any choice to change it because they are usually following uh, some SOP standard operating procedures and they don't have the uh, option to change it uh, instantly. And other than that, academia has the benefit of uh, intellectual autonomy and this comes under freedom as well. Like you can do whatever you want. If you want to learn about Let's say uh, I recently saw a project of ML in which uh, the person was uh, like suggesting uh, these uh, based on the emotion of people. So this is, was a very unique thing and very a very good thing as well. Like if you're sad, it will recommend uh, like inspiring uh, these to you and so on and so forth. So it was a really good project. So in academia, you can do whatever you want. You're not uh, liable to do some uh, particular thing. You can do whatever you want. But in the industry, whatever the project manager says, you have to do that. And let's say you're building a face recognition system. You have to follow the SOPs. You have to follow the specific procedure. You don't have the uh, option to do whatever you want. Uh, like like this project that I mentioned, if he was working in in some organization and he represented that yeah, I want to do this project. His project man manager would have never approved. He said that we're doing uh, face detection, so focus on that. So uh, these are the difference between industry and academia. And now as far as the salary is concerned, industry pays more. Uh, 
uh, industry pays a lot more than the academia is paying, but industry is more difficult as well because they even ask you to build models in one day as well, whereas it might take uh, a week or two to build them. So it is very stressful and competitive in the industry, but it's very fun to work as well. It's sort of a love hate relationship. <laughs> OK, so uh, academia, uh, you might get uh, you might struggle to get funding. Yeah, that's a problem. As I said, uh, it doesn't pay that much, even if you're a research assistant or a practitioner or researcher, uh, you might come across these issues. And in the industry, you're using state of the art models. We're going to discuss this in the next slide. Uh, OK, in academia, you're working with old and legacy papers. Uh, this is the same thing that I talked about, like uh, you're researching about things that were done four to five years ago. Uh, so you have a lot of uh, problems there. Um, they might be using some languages which are now uh, obsolete, such as like there are a lot of languages which are obsolete. So you might have uh, problems re-implementing those papers, and by papers I mean research papers and a lot of opportunities. Again, uh, like you can do whatever you want. You are not restricted by anything or anyone. You can do like even you can. Uh, invent a new method for face detection. No one is uh, going to stop you. And if you do that, everyone is going to use your method if it's better since everything is open source. And then the languages uh, which are being used in the academia is either Scala or Python Julia. Um, Python is famous in ML, but uh, if you hop over to research, uh, research papers are written in R, they're written in Scala, they're written in Python, Julia, like. It's all of it's a mixed bag. You can expect any language. You don't uh, you you can't expect one language uh, to work for uh, like all of the research projects and average base position. Like uh, as I said earlier, uh, you're not going to be stressed. That you have to uh, complete this uh, in one day or two days. Uh, you, you have leverage of time. So you can easily do it with your projects and this does not include deployment most of the time. And if any of you have ever, ever worked in machine learning, you might have faced an issue that how would you show your model to others? Because your model is outputting values uh, as I displayed in the uh, first slide, like you have dots and graphs and those sort of things and you have to run the entire code. How are you going to show your model to the people? So in academia, you can just uh, post the results in your research paper. You don't have to like uh, sort of deploy. Deployment is not necessary. Uh, you can like deployment is a hassle itself, so you don't have to deal with that hassle. And in the industry, you're using state of the art models. This is a term that we use for state of the art models. You might have come across this SOTA. Uh, this is this basically stands for state of the art models. So you usually you're usually using the top notch, which is uh, currently being used uh, like in NLP. Yeah. In NLP, uh, you're currently using uh, hugging face transformers and bird based transformers. That is uh, like standard right now and in the industry is using that. But whereas if you want to do any academia project, you might come across any uh, like TFIDF model or any sort of old model. So uh, that's the case here. And you have to follow the industry standard, as I said earlier. And another thing that you have a very few opportunities, like as I said earlier, that the jobs are very limited. And the most of the people that are coming to jobs for machine learning and those sort of things, those are those people who have skipped uh, calculus and statistics and those sort of things. They do not know the working of uh, machine learning models. So I, if they're hired, they pose a bad image and like whatever. Uh, still, there's very few opportunities in the industry right now. So that's the fact and you need to face that. You need to work hard to differentiate yourself uh, from the audience. 
And then uh, as far as academia is concerned, just go ahead and ask any of your professors, uh, especially in the CS department or SE department, what sort of projects are they researching about? 90% of the people are going to say, uh, professors are going to say they're working in something related to NLP. So uh, you can offer any of your professor that you want to work as a uh, like research assistant and they will happily hire you. So because a lot of uh, like uh, professors are researching in this as well, and some of you might not even know what NLP is. So we are going to discuss it. Don't worry about it. Again, uh, careers in machine learning, what can you do? You can either do machine uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, this mostly includes a uh, collection of all of these things. Uh, it is sort of an end product. Like uh, we discussed something about uh, self-driving cars and reinforcement learning, if you remember. So uh, this is related to those sort of things. And machine learning, this is using the uh, traditional models that we are using. Like we've been using it for 10 to 20 years now. Yeah, I think so. It's been 10, 20 years. Yeah, so these are those sort of models and data science. Uh, we've already discussed that this is uh, based off of statistics. And if you're good with statistics, you can go to data science as well. And Python is just a tool for data science. The main thing about data science is stats. You need to understand stats if you want to data, uh, go to data science. Because languages and frameworks are just a tool. The main thing is what's in your brain. How good of a problem solver you are. That's the main thing. And then moving on to natural language processing. Uh, it's like everything related to text and audio. That's natural language processing. That's NLP. That's the topic of our discussion. And like let's say you want to analyze uh, what the people are saying on Twitter. Twitter is a text based, mostly text based uh, platform. Everyone is uh, tweeting things out and most of the things are tweets and it's in text form. So whatever processing that you need to do on those sort of that data, it comes under the domain of a natural language processing. And you can do this by traditional machine learning and deep learning as well. Now coming back to the deep learning part. Now deep learning is a particularly new thing. Yeah. Uh, there is a question from Erim Nas. Uh, she okay. raised her hand. Okay, uh, what's she the question? Erim. Uh, Erim, you can ask the question. I think so. She left. OK. Uh, if any of you have any questions, uh, just uh, like fill in the form that I uh, like stated or just type it in the chat box. I will happily answer your questions. OK, so I'm moving on to deep learning part. Now what deep learning is, it's uh, it's machine learning, but it's based off of a different architecture. Deep learning is based off of neural networks. I think you might have come across that term uh, anytime in your past. So uh, deep learning is based off of neural networks. It is a very complex and very demanding domain and everyone is switching towards deep learning uh, right now. And this is like a domain of itself you can spend years and years on it and still not be uh, expert in it. Still, uh, this is a very interesting domain. You have neurons uh, like neurons in your brain and it mimics that. So it's a very interesting domain as well. You can uh, apply it as well. Uh, it's included in the roadmap, which I'll be sharing in uh, like by the end of this event. OK, now computer vision. Anything related to image or videos it comes under computer vision. Let's say you want to build a face detector or let's say you want to. 
okay. and do anything related to uh, uh, like images or videos, face unlock or anything that comes under the domain of computer vision. Yes. OK, so uh, then we have data analysis. Uh, data analysis uh, is like the analytics part. Uh, it has a few. You can say it aligns with mostly statistics and calculus. And what you basically do in this domain is extract insights from the data. Let's say you are giving the data of students from all over Pakistan. So you can ask a few questions. Uh, what sort of skills do the uh, students have? Uh, what is the ratio of uh, highest? Uh, uh, like highest uh, the, the students uh, who are achieving the highest marks, uh, like which university are they from? Like these are the questions that usually forms and the data analysis part of that solves this. And then we have data analytics as well. I haven't mentioned that here because it like sort of come it sort of comes under the umbrella of data anal analysis. So it's uh, like domain of itself. Now coming back uh, now moving forward to our main topic NLP natural language processing. This is the domain that I have expertise over. So this is uh, the topic that uh, we're going to talk about today. Like we have everything here AI, ML, DS and in NLP you you deal with AI, you deal with ML, you deal with deep learning, you deal with partially data analysis and data science as well sometimes. The only thing you're not covering in this domain is computer vision. Okay, so what even is NLP, you might ask? Well, every anything that is related to um, like text, it comes under the domain of NLP and it like overlaps with the domain of linguistics. Like what is linguistics? Uh, you might ask linguistics is uh, the study of uh, language. It might be English or like whatever an MA English or MS English person learns. You can uh, implement those things in Python as well in NLP as well, because both of the domains are overlapping. So uh, you need to understand linguistics as well uh, if you want to uh, be a, uh, an expert in NLP. Uh, like let's say I'm writing. I'm having a very good day. What does this statement mean? This statement means that I'm really happy. So how do we know that I'm happy? Uh, so we have to train our model on uh, some data. We need to convert the text into numerical values. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Okay. So I was saying that let's say I'm uh, saying something like I'm having a very good day. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm having a very good day. That means I'm happy and yeah, I'm happy and like we as human know that it means that we're happy. But how do you teach a computer that knows nothing but binary ones and zeros that uh, I am having a good day means happy? So you need to follow a certain process, certain techniques uh, to teach the computer that this means that you're happy. And now when you do those of sort of things, now you're in the domain of NLP, so that's what NLP means. It can be text or speech. Let's say I'm saying I'm having a good day by, by my voice. So how do you extract those things from my voice that I'm having a good day or I'm saying I'm having a good day, but I'm saying it with a very like sort of a sad voice. 
So our machine learning model should understand that I'm not having a good day. I'm rather sad. So how do you teach that uh, to the machine learning model? We teach it through uh, the natural language processing techniques. Now, there are types of NLP as well. There are two types of NLP. One is uh, natural language understanding and what is uh, one is natural language generation. And what natural language understanding does is it's basically any. I think we should first discuss about NLG equipment, uh, then we can discuss about NLU. NLG is the generation of text. Let's say uh, we develop a chatbot that talks to you in some way or form. Uh, you might have uh, gone to Taraz and asked some question there or any site like most of the sites uh, are using chatbots right now. So you message anything, it replies to you. The person is not on the back end. The chatbot is replying to you. The model is replying to, to you. So that is a NLP based model and it comes under the domain of natural language generation because it's generating text on its own. It might say some words which were not present in its training data. Remember we talked about supervised and unsupervised learning. We trained it based on some uh, specific data. OK, so everything related to uh, natural language generation uh, is uh, uh, like. Like chatbots and, and anything that you generate with the help of the ML model, it comes under this domain and anything that you do uh, from the existing data and you extract patterns, you extract uh, like, like you build classification models and anything that comes under the domain of NLU. This is a very vast domain. Most of the things comes uh, come under this. And if you see anything is generated uh, which was not present in the original training data, that means that it's under the domain of natural language generation. Now oh, you can see this diagram like where NLP stands. We have a circle of artificial intelligence. And then uh, machine learning is a subdomain of artificial intelligence. And then deep learning is again a subdomain of machine learning. And we have NLP. First look at uh, linguistics. This is from like the MA English part that we talked about. So linguistic is a, lang a study of languages. So you can see that the AI and linguistic part does overlap and where it overlaps, it's divided into two things. NLG and NLU. NLG is not uh, like uh, overlapping with any of ML or DL uh, things, but uh, in reality it does uh, like sort of overlap. And the NLU part obviously it does. So you can clearly see that uh, NLP is part of machine learning, but it is not whole machine learning. It includes a part of linguistics as well. So uh, if you have any uh, friend from MA English or English department, just sit down with them, understand uh, a few concepts and implement that in your NLP project. It will be really helpful for you. <laughs> and now what can you do with NLP? Like what sort of projects can you do with NLP? Uh, you can do text classification. Uh, let's say I'm talking about admissions. Uh, since it's uh, August and as we humans know that in August usually uh, the admissions for universities open and if I'm talking about admissions, I'm obviously talking talking about the admissions of universities. So uh, if I were to classify, let's say admissions are open and you give it to a machine learning model and tell it to classify it between something. So uh, what the model will do it uh, is it will classify into two things university or not university. Um, if it was trained on the right data, it will correctly classify that we're talking about university here. So that's text classification. And as you might know, uh, we talked about two things, uh, university and not university. That means we're talking about two classes, university and not university. And two means by so this is binary classification. Binary classification because we're talking about two classes. 
if we were talking about more classes, let's say university, hospital and job. Now these are three classes. They, you won't call it binary classification. You will call it multi-class classification. Whether two or more classes are there, you call it uh, multi-class classification. And then we have sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is the same thing that we discussed that uh, I am feeling very good today and then extracting that this is happy or sad or these sort of things that sentiment analysis. We are going to be having an event on that as well. So stay tuned for that. And then topic modeling, let's say I'm talking about the food was very great. Uh, the tea was really good as well. Uh, the Nehari was very well and so on and so forth. So obviously we are talking about any one topic, which is food. So how do we recognize that whatever you're talking about, this is food. So uh, we can do it by a technique called topic modeling. This comes under the domain of uh, unsupervised learning. Like remember those clusters that we drew, this comes under that. And I will be teaching you guys that in uh, upcoming weeks as well. Don't worry about that. OK, so name entity recognition. Let's say I'm talking about that. Uh, Imran Khan is the president, uh, the prime minister of Pakistan. And now in this statement, you have a few things. Imran Khan, prime minister and Pakistan. Why? Because these three are entities. Uh, Imran Khan is an entity which is a person. Uh, prime minister is a position and Pakistan is a country. How do you extract these things out of a text? If I'm sending you a message called uh, Imran Khan is the prime minister of Pakistan and I want our machine learning model to extract these this information from that. How do we extract that? This is done through a technique called named entity recognition. Again, uh, this is a whole topic itself where uh, I just wanted to give a brief uh, introduction about everything. Uh, related to this and then uh, we'll have some maybe some event about this in the future as well. And then uh, text generation again, we talked about uh, generating text and then text summarization. Let's say you have. How would I put it? Let's say you have a movie script. Or like forget it, let's say you have a book and a book has usually 200 pages or 100 or 200 pages and you don't have the time to. Uh, you don't have the time to uh, like uh, read through the entire uh, book. So what you can do is uh, pass all of that data into your. Into your uh, machine learning model. Yeah, uh, in your machine learning model and it will summarize it for you. Let's say you ask it to summarize it into. Three or four sentences. It will summarize the entire book into three or four sentences and you'll be surprised how accurate it is and it's possible for you to build that model as well. And then there are different types of summarization. We're going to we're not going to talk about that because that's a different uh, like topic itself and then Chatbots, we've already talked about chatbots, what chatbots are, and you can train chatbots as well. This is comes under the domain of NLP. And some of the examples of NLP is this. Now let's say I've mentioned this is a sentence. Now we know that this is a noun and this uh, is, is a verb, and uh, this is a determiner and this is a determiner as well. And you want to check which uh, word is dependent upon which. So you can train a model on this as well. Like you can see everything is dependent upon this. Sentence is the main thing. If I say this is a sentence or if I say sentence. You still get the idea that we're talking about a sentence, right? So these can be removed. So this uh, this sort of analytical thinking is important when you're doing pre-processing and dimensionality reduction. So these are questions that should pop up in your mind. Uh, I know that this does not make a sense for us like this is a sentence and simply stating a sentence, but for the computer it's the same thing. It's called dependency parsing by the way. 
like which thing is dependent upon which. And now we see uh, entity name entity recognition. I like talked about uh, about it to you as well. Like Imran Khan is the prime minister of Pakistan. Now, if you see this is correctly highlighted this, like this was the person and Google was the organization and 2007 was the date. So, so it automatically uh, recognize this uh, from your given text. So this is NER. Now who uses NLP? Uh, you might be thinking that which companies are using if it is uh, even a huge domain or not. So uh, Amazon is using it. Amazon, you might be thinking, how does Amazon use it? Uh, well, Amazon uses it mainly for its reviews. Uh, if you've seen uh, reviews in any site like the Raz or those sort of things, there is usually text. So it uh, extracts uh, insights like you were happy when you bought the product, you were sad and those sort of things. And that's how it processes uh, that data. And Google, uh, did it ever come to you? Like uh, if you were searching about, let's say, you were searching about machine learning or yeah, machine learning, uh, you Google it and every result that comes under it is related, somehow related to your, uh, like whatever you searched for machine learning. How does it do that? It basically follows the NLP uh, techniques as well. You can do that as well. You can build your own search engine uh, in NLP too. So uh, there's a huge potential and Grammarly, uh, I think so you all are familiar with it. It corrects your grammar if it's wrong. It also uses NLP. Twitter is one of the most heaviest users of uh, NLP. And a lot of the researchers and academia is working on the Twitter data and Facebook is obviously using it. Uh, have you ever come across uh, uh, like sometimes you're posting something and your post gets blocked or Facebook bans you that you've uh, like violated their community standards? How do you think it knew that you violated their standards through NLP? Obviously, like if you use a word terrorist, it will going to uh, like uh, it'll block your uh, like account. So that is being done by NLP. And then uh, Reddit is doing it as well and almost every business because this is a really good uh, ROI based model. Uh, why should you care about NLP? And why am I emphasizing on NLP? Uh, one of the main reasons is research. Uh, NLP is one of the most booming uh, like topics which uh, you can work on. Like if you're an uh, undergraduate student in your fifth, sixth semester, just pick any topic related to NLP, head over to your FYP panel. It is going to be approved instantly. They are not going to say no to your NLP model. So you, this can help you in your uh, like FYP as well. And uh, like there's a huge potential if you can, you can invent new things as well in NLP since a lot of research is uh, going on in that department. And then uh, little to none resources are required. Uh, as you might, if you have a, uh, ever come across computer vision or CNN, this is a uh, convolutional neural network. This is uh, used in images mostly. If you ever had the chance to uh, train a model related to image or video, you'll realize that how much resources do you need? You need a GPU which costs uh, like one lakh or two lakh, and still it doesn't run as fluently. It will take hours, sometimes days. So it's really like computationally heavy, these things. But in NLP, it's not that heavy. You can uh, get away with your 8 GB RAM laptop and you can use uh, free uh, technologies as well, such as Microsoft Azure. Uh, it provides uh, uh, like a free portal as well where you can run your cloud based uh, machine learning models and you can use Google Colab. It's free as well, like you can use a lot of free resources and you don't need to pay a single dime for your machine learning uh, process. You might come across something if you're doing something really heavy, but 
as a learner, you're not going to come across anything. And then it is a very less saturated field. Like uh, there are not a lot of people in NLP. Like uh, if you ever like, I can guarantee most of you guys wouldn't have uh, like did not even know about NLP before this event. I've seen a lot of people. Uh, it's no surprise uh, because this is a very less lesser known field and there are not a lot of people in it. So you have a very good chance in excelling in it. Uh, again, uh, I urge you guys to be uh, like a quality machine learning engineer. Don't just follow those people who are import TensorFlow, SDF people. Uh, follow all of those steps that I told you guys and you'll be like standing out from the audience. And this is a very less saturated field. There are not a lot of people in it. And this will be helpful for you if you go abroad, if you go to the uh, like USA or in Europe or anything, it will be helpful for you uh, there as well. And poor thing, you will never get bored. <laughs> as I said, like uh, I placed a few uh, things about Imran Khan and other people, so you won't get bored in it as well. Build a tool which analyzes emotions, uh, like what the audience thinks about uh, Nawaz Sharif or anything you can do uh, that you want and it will be a fun project so you'll never get bored in it uh, this is the thing that uh, mostly uh, uh, like front end developers face because front end developers are uh, the ones who usually get bored with their uh, like uh, job that they usually get bored with it uh, okay so you won't uh, get bored with it then we have GPT-3. If any of you know about GPT-3, this is basically current uh, state of the art model and it can write code for you. Like the GitHub Copilot, if you've heard of it, just tell it to uh, write something and it'll write for you. If you tell it to write a book, it'll write a book for you. Tell it to write a, a email or write a resume, it will write everything for you. Like this is real top notch stuff but not everyone has access to it. So you can build something like this as well. We're really close to a breakthrough here, like uh, the robots that we've seen in the movies. Like we now we don't have the robots uh, as of now, we, but we are pretty close to it. Uh, like our model can do most of the things that are said in the like movies. And now coming to the roadmap, how do you learn NLP? How should you learn NLP? Uh, the very first thing uh, is that if you don't know about anything, like you don't know about programming or anything, learn C sharp, uh, C plus plus. That is hands down the best language a beginner can learn because every uh, every language is uh, derived from C plus plus. So just learn this uh, and whether you switch to Java, Python or anything, uh, you won't have any issues. And Python is a uh, like sh short of a, a narrowed down version of a programming language. There are not a lot of stuff which is present in Python. So uh, it will be difficult for you to understand how things work in programming languages. But in C++, everything is mentioned. So first learn C++, then move towards Python. And after you've learned Python, I would highly recommend that you learn OOP in C++. Don't learn OOP. OOP is Object Oriented Programming. This is basically a method of programming. Uh, do not learn OOP in Python. Initially, this is the same advice to you. Learn it in C++ or Java. And then after you've understood all the concepts, then learn it in Python. It will make a lot of sense when you done and you'll thank yourself uh, that you chose the, uh, this path and then uh, move off to uh, the theoretical foundation for NLP and machine learning uh, learn about what things mean like in NLP you have terms like uh, tokenization uh, stemming uh, lemmatizing uh, DFIDF these sort of things so learn about the theoretical foundations that what 
these sort of things mean and about machine learning as well. And once you are cleared with the theoretical part, learn about pre-processing. Like as I said earlier, that this is a sentence might uh, seem weird to you if you say it like sentence, but uh, to a computer, it's uh, like uh, the same thing. So you need to learn about how to pre-process your data. This is a very important thing. And then uh, move on towards uh, machine learning, and then uh, you should understand the comparison between uh, ML and NLP. Like what are the similarities and what are the differences? Like uh, this thing. You should they like this is a visual representation, but you should practically implement it and understand why is this like this. Understand it from uh, core. And then uh, another thing to notice in ML, we directly have those columns that we talked about one, two, three, four. But in NLP, we have this is a sentence. I'm feeling really good today. Now a computer does not understand these things like what is this and text. Um, you cannot train a model based off of that. So what do you need to do? You need to convert this uh, like uh, text into some numerical form like one, two, three, four, any sort of thing. Now there are multiple techniques of converting it into that, but still uh, you need to look into that. Uh, this is a really uh, like the core area of uh, NLP. And then after you've cleared all of these things, then move towards deep learning and deep learning will take a lot of your time. And I would encourage you to build a few projects here. And then after you build a few projects here, move on to deep learning because this is going to take a lot of your time and you might. And this is where you're going to face the real calculus and real statistics. OK, now moving on to exact resources. Uh, I would highly recommend that you do a course from 365 Data Science. Basically, this is a website uh, which offers paid courses, but it is definitely worth it. But in case you don't want to pay for the courses, uh, I have compiled all the resources that are available in that course here on my GitHub. I've provided the link uh, in the upcoming slide to my GitHub, but keep in mind uh, this does not contain the videos. Uh, and again, I would highly encourage you guys to go to 365 Data Science and if you want to do a course on it, uh, do it. Uh, yeah, like all of the uh, coding files and PDFs, all of those things are here, uh, but videos are not there. So it totally depends on you, which medium do you want. <laughs> then the other resources that I would uh, suggest are and you, Angie's, uh, Coursera course, which is about machine learning and deep learning. This is one of the most prominent ML courses in the entire industry. Every ML engineer is going to recommend this to you as well. And then we have DataCamp. Uh, DataCamp is also a website uh, in which you can uh, test out uh, data analytics, data analysis, or a lot of things. Like you, if you search it, uh, you're going to find it really interesting. It is paid as well, but we have a solution for it. You can get it free. Uh, just like type it down somewhere. It will be helpful for you or either I'll. Or let me just. Send it in the group. OK, Adil has a question that uh, why suggest OOP in C++? Uh, I already cleared it that uh, OOP in Python is missing a lot of uh, things like OOP is based on a few techniques. Let's, let's say we have polymorphism, uh, abstraction, these sort of things. But in Python, a lot of those things are narrowed down. A lot of those things are like shrinked into a simplified version. And if you're a new person, you would not understand what that means. And the only way you're going to understand that, oh, this is abstraction, oh, this is polymorphism, or oh, this is encapsulation, uh, is if you know about, uh, like, uh, if you've learned it from uh, C or Java. Okay, uh, I'm going to type it in the chat, like, what 
You need to search. Okay. And these are the two websites. If you register for it, uh, these are basically for students and uh, you're going to get a lot of stuff for free. You're going to get a uh, plural site subscription for free uh, around one or two months and you're going to get data camp uh, subscription for a few months and you're going to get a lot of more stuff like you're going to get a free domain, free uh, server, free hosting, a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, so uh, I would highly uh, recommend that you guys uh, follow this and I've also made a Google Docs file for you guys. I will also send the link here in the chat as well so uh, you guys can uh, like see it as well. All of the links are mentioned uh, there too. OK, so moving on. Now, before moving on to Python, uh, there is a short quiz that I would like you guys uh, to be a part of. Let me just uh, open it. Basically, it's uh, uh, like uh, Kahoot. It's uh, basically a sort of quiz. It's a fun quiz. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun here. Uh, it will take. Just take five minutes. Uh, I'll share the link here and you guys can like follow along. OK, so what you guys need to do is go to www.kahoot.it and enter this pin. I'll send the link in the chat. Just click on it and enter uh, this pin. In the meanwhile, let me tell you how this works. Uh, you're going to see the question on the screen. And then uh, you will have a few options uh, like a triangle, a circle and a square and these sort of things. And whatever answer that you think is the correct click on that, like that image will be present on uh, your mobile as well and on your screen as well. Okay, let's wait a minute and let's see if anyone else wants to join and then we're going to stop. Great, we have a lot of people here. It's going to be fun. Let's just wait a few seconds more. OK, I think we should start. OK, I'll wait just 10 seconds and then we'll start. 5, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. OK, let's start.
just select whatever uh, like shape that you think is correct or color. One, two, three, four are the options. Oh, only three of you uh, guessed it right. A. Okay, now moving on to the other one. Uh, like the quiz is clear to you, right? Like uh, if you think the answer is two, uh, click on uh, this diamond shape. If you think the answer is three, click on the circle. If you think the answer is one, click on triangle. And if you think the answer is uh, a square, click on uh, like the square. Okay, uh, I'm starting the next question. Be ready for it. Aisha Malik is on top. Based this action is the example of. Oh. This time, uh, like 10 of you are right, so you guys are improving. Great job. By the way, face detection is the example of computer vision because obviously, as I said earlier, you're dealing with uh, images and videos. If it was text, anything related to text, it would have been from NLP. And if it was anything related to stats uh, or business question, it would have been from data science. So uh, good job, guys. And it's really good to see that none of you selected data science. Good job. Oh, Lisha is on the second place. Tough competition. And Aisha is still on top. Okay, be ready for the next question. Next question. This is a pretty easy one. Do you love memes? Great. Thank God no one selected Paul's. In uh, the same result. This is this getting fun? OK, now moving on to the next question. It's again, if you are good at web designing, you should leave your job and learn machine learning. True or false? Great. I'm really happy to see that most of you selected false. Now, let me talk a bit about this thing. Like I already explained uh, it earlier that you should not follow the hype train. Do not go after what the people are doing. Do what you love. Like some people are good at something. Let's say you're good at cooking. So it might be. Uh, like sort of an option for you to choose any mathematics subjects which you have no idea about. You might get good marks in it, but you hate it. So I'd say stick at because you love doing it. and same is the case here. If you are good at something, you should stick at it because uh, like but if you don't choose something you love. OK, so moving ahead. Nice. Uh, Shajil is third now. Be ready, guys. Competition. R, Python, Java, or C plus plus. Great. C++ isn't used in machine learning. Uh, 
what I talked about in uh, the path uh, was that you should uh, learn C++ as your first language. Uh, but the question was which language is mostly used in machine learning? Machine learning is uh, uh, done in Python. And the second uh, language that is uh, like most prominent in, is, in ML is R. Python and R, these are the two top contenders. C++ is not used in uh, machine learning, although it is uh, present in libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, like they are written in uh, uh, C++. And another fun fact that, do you know why Python is so popular? Because it's most of these libraries are written in C++ and it's easy to write. So what they do is uh, import a library and do whatever they want to do with a simplified interface. That way they have the speed of uh, C++. By the way, C++ is the fastest language on the planet. There is no language faster than C++. So uh, you have the fastest language and you have the simplest language as well. So best of both worlds. That's why uh, people prefer uh, to go with Python. That's the reason. And these are the things that you might be asked in an interview. That's why Python. Great, Alicia is on her fourth, and Aisha is still uh, enjoying the first place. Good job. Now, the other question, which should you learn first? Machine learning, deep learning, or the NLP? Great. Most of you selected it correctly, but for those who did not select it correctly, uh, thing is that I already talked about deep learning, that it is the most difficult one and you should complete projects in machine learning first, and then you should move towards anything. And NLP is the application of machine learning. Like you cannot implement NLP if you don't know machine learning. So obviously you have to learn machine learning before implementing NLP. This the very first thing that you need is a programming language. Now, which programming language? Python. And then in Python, you need to learn simple Python and OOP. And after you've learned that, you need to learn about machine learning. And after you've learned about machine learning, you go towards uh, deep learning or NLP. It's totally on you. OK, so we have a new contender here. Let's see who's on the top next time. What is the use case of NLP? We talked about this. Like, which is an example of NLP? Predicting stock prices, face detection, self driving cars, or review classification. you guys had a hard time here. OK, so remember I talked about Amazon reviews like you have reviews uh, in on anything that you buy online and predicting stock prices. Uh, let's say you want to predict uh, a stock prices. What do you input to the model? Obviously, it is going to be a numerical value, right? And what is NLP? anything related to text. So this is out of the equation. And then face detection, we already know this comes under the domain of images and uh, videos. So this is already out of the equation. Self-driving cars, this is the example of uh, reinforcement learning. This was the very first thing that we talked about. So the only thing we're left with is review classification. So uh, yeah, you guys had a hard time here. No worries. Let's see who's on the top now. Oh, NCI is on the top and Alicia on the second. Aisha, you dropped your first place. You need to work hard now. And NCI has a straight uh, with five correct answers. Great. Now, moving to the next question. You need to be a PhD to learn machine learning. This is an easy one.
great. And who selected true? We don't need a PhD. Well, if you you want to do a PhD, no one's stopping you, but we don't uh, want to do a PhD right now. Just for machine learning. OK, so moving on. Oh, Neha is on the second. Oh, tough competition, guys, and it's the last question. Let's see who wins. Machine learning and NLP is the same thing. This is a tricky one. Remember. Great. Again, you guys are improving and you guys are learning a lot here and uh, yeah, these are not the same thing. Like I should refer the diagram to you guys. Yeah. This is the diagram. You can see that uh, ML and NLP are not the same thing. They do overlap, but these are not the same thing. So great job, guys. Uh, now let's see who won. Drum roll. Third is Neha, second is Ensia, and first is Alicia. Woohoo, congrats! And the fourth and fifth are Aisha and Nikora. Congratulations, guys! Good job. OK, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now coming back to this, we were on hands on Python. OK, so let's get started. Uh, what do you need? Uh, you can either follow along or do it later, totally on you. But in case you don't have uh, these things installed, you need Anaconda and you need uh, Microsoft VS Code. And you can install Python directly, but I would not recommend that because Anaconda is like sort of a uh, package which uh, includes all of the main things which you need to install in Python manually. It comes with pre install and you don't need to configure anything. It's 64 bit. Uh, you don't have to take care of anything. Just go ahead and uh, install Anaconda. I'll let you guys know where it is. Anaconda. This is the website. You can go here and directly download it. Uh, you can download commercial edition, uh, individual edition, and you don't have to worry about anything. And after that is done, you need to install VS Code. And so if you guys want to follow along, you can just go Python. You can go ahead and let me just share it with you guys. Okay, so you guys can go here, just search uh, Python uh, online, and it will uh, bring you over here. And in the meanwhile, I'll open VS Code and Visual Studio Code. This is something that we have here, and when you open it, you won't have this file. Let me close it. You'll have something like this, and then what you have to do is click on new file, and you'll have like this empty file, and then you'll click on save. Then you need to save whatever you want to save uh, in the format of .py. Let's say this is a demo file, so I'll say mo.py. Py means this is a Python file, so you need to make sure you put that extension there and click on all files from here as well. That way it doesn't rename it to .txt. Okay, now you can see the logo here, right? 
uh, that means that you've successfully created a Python file. And the very first thing that is like sort of a standard that is the culture that is, you can say, a requirement for any coder to write uh, whenever he uh, starts a new language. It's hello world. Hello world. That's it. You can see that here, uh, like the hello world is printed. So I was just joking around. You don't need to print it at all. You can print any arbitrary uh, text here, but this is the standard that programmers use that you need to uh, like sort of uh, print hello world. OK, so coming back uh, to Python. Let's talk about variables. Uh, what are variables and what are constants? Uh, variables can be considered as X, Y, Z like the variables we see in uh, uh, mathematics, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, these sort of things. In programming, these are the same things. You can consider um, variables as uh, like sort of a box in which you can place things. Like I can place one into X, and this is how I place or assign a value to X. This is called assigning, uh, by the way. And you can assign it to, and then I'm going to print X. You can see that two is printed here. And now if I change this value to, let's say, uh, I E, then print it, I E is, is printed. And also, did you notice we previously printed uh, a numerical value, and now we're printing text but Python did not raise any issues. And in case you do anything like this uh, in uh, any other language, C++, Java, it will like uh, fill your entire command line with red prompts that you've done this mistake, this mistake. So this is basically done uh, by like uh, type casting. It dynamically, uh, you can say implicitly uh, type cost it into whatever required format uh, that it wants. Like it was previously uh, like int. OK, let's talk about uh, the different data types. This is. Uh, you can add comments by hash. 1.0 is uh, for. BC is string. OK. ABC is string, and if there's a dot in between them, that's float, and if it's there's no dot between them, it's uh, uh, an integer. These are the main three types that you can face. And if you type ABC and BC, are they the same thing? Yes, sir. OK, so uh, on this uh, part. Uh, in Python, they're the same thing, but in other languages, they won't be the same thing because in other languages, uh, the single inverted comma means that it's a constant and the double inverted comma means that it's a string. So if you do this in C++, you're going to be uh, like punched in the face with a lot of errors and <laughs> those sort of stuff. So Python uh, is very is a very easy language. It doesn't uh, like uh, have issues with these sort of things. Uh, it considers uh, both of the strings as strings and both of the uh, statements are the same statements for uh, by Python. So you don't need to do anything in that sense. OK, now uh, these were now, if I've typed one, this can be considered as a constant because you can't change a value of this. Let's say I want to assign one is equal to ABC. Let's say, let's see what happens. You can see, cannot assign to literal. What it's basically saying is that this is a constant. How can I assign a value to a constant? So you need to have a variable here, and variable can have any name, like I triple E, 
or yay or whatever you want uh, you're free to do so but you should follow the usual convention and your names shouldn't be a b c it should be a well defined let's say name so you can easily refer to it and you should have the practice of adding comments and yeah these were uh, like constants and variables and now let's talk about loops let's say i want to print uh, a value from 1 to 10 how should i print that i have two options i use the print statement one and okay and then two three four like this and so on to 10 but this isn't efficient if i told you to write it to 1000 how would you do it obviously it's going to uh, be problematic for you so what you can do is you can loop it so you you need to write a for loop the syntax for it is for uh, let's say i in range 10 and i what will it do it will print all of the digits from 1 to 10 you can see here and can someone tell me why did it print till 9 why did not it uh, print the 10th uh, digit sir uh, because loop hamesha zero se start hota hai like memory hamesha zero se assign hoti hai like 0 1 2 3 4 exactly exactly and 9 tak ye 10 digit pure ho gaye like agar aap zero se count kare na to these are 10 so uh, like it did print out 10 uh, digits so you need to be uh, careful if you're a newbie and you don't know about this stuff so indexes always start from zero zero is the first index but let's say you wanted uh, the loop to start from one what will you do type a one here add a comma here one and ten it will start from one and go through ten now we're going to print it here you can see that it started from 1 and stopped at 9. Now we have another issue. 10. Uh, we still don't have 10 uh, digits. We still have 9. So what will we do? We will add 1 over here. 10 plus 1. Obviously, we added 1 to the 0. So we are going to uh, add 1 to uh, this as well. Now you can see that it printed out to uh, 10. And this is just an introduction for you guys. Uh, we're going to be conducting a hands-on session on NLP and machine learning in the future as well. So you guys uh, will have an opportunity to, to thoroughly uh, learn about Python. But since it, this session is already too long, uh, I won't take most of your time and I'll just go over uh, the main thing and uh, you guys can join the next session uh, which will be in a week or two uh, so it will be helpful for you guys to learn it hands on there as well okay so these were the loops and then we have arrays as well and they have the same policies one two three you can store data in it okay so this was uh, like just short introduction of python to you uh, the actual python that we're going to be teaching uh, is going to be on the hands-on session because this session is already too long. I don't want you guys to get stressed out that uh, this is too much or something. So just relax uh, and we'll have everything covered. Okay, so do you have any sort of questions regarding the event? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And also do fill the form because uh, we will be providing you guys with a certificate. And if you guys uh, 
want the uh, certificate, please fill in the form that uh, Aman has sent. And yeah. And now it's networking time. And if you uh, guys know networking is a huge deal, uh, you have to uh, like connect with your colleagues and peers. So if any of you want to connect with me, you can hop over to my LinkedIn. This is the link and this is uh, the GitHub. And uh, you guys can call, even contact me at my email. This is uh, my email as well. And also, uh, I'm sharing a document with you guys. Just hold on for a minute. Just a second. Yeah, this is a document. So this document has all the links that you guys need. Uh, this will have the link to a Discord channel. Um, Discord is like sort of a WhatsApp, but it's a professional thing. Uh, it has all of the channels made, artificial intelligence uh, and web development. If you have any question related to that, you can ask there. Uh, everything is in uh, that document. You know what? Let me just show you guys like what the document is about. This is the Discord link. You can just join the Discord by clicking on it. This is the YouTube link. Uh, basically, uh, as you might know, I already have a channel and I have a few tutorials up there. And since I'm busy, I don't have much time uh, uploading uh, tutorials, but I will be uploading it in the future. So uh, this is a tutorial that I did for building a chatbot. So if you want to learn about uh, how you can build a chatbot, you can go here as well. So um, I have provided other resources as well. Yeah, it has my GitHub link, it has my LinkedIn link, uh, link it has DataCamp link, it has the Telepath NLP, uh, let me NLP course. Python, uh, Python's uh, course as well, and Python's O course as well, and already mentioned that you can do uh, machine learning from 365 uh, as science or data camp and you can do some uh, deep learning from NQNG course and I've also provided a computer vision course because I'm not enforcing you guys that you should follow NLP only. You can uh, do computer vision as well. If you think computer uh, face detection and these sort of things are uh, interesting, I have provided the link here. Just go on with it and like follow the course and yeah. Uh, it was a great session and uh, this document will be available to you. Just save it and in case I come across any uh, future opportunities or anything, I will uh, be also posting it here. And also one more thing, uh, I forgot to add one link here. Uh, I'm running a job group for Raul Pindi Islamabad based students. Uh, I will put a link to that as well. Like uh, I share every opportunities uh, that I get, uh, like sort of uh, internships, jobs, or all of those things. I'll put the link here after uh, this ends. So you guys can join that as well. And it's a closed uh, group, like uh, only I can message it. None of you can message it. So you won't have any sort of issues uh, in that as well. And there won't be spamming, spamming uh, from that. Uh, as well. Uh, okay, guys, so it was uh, great talking to you. And thank you. It was a great session. I had uh, like the quiz was great and everything. And I hope to talk you, to you guys in the future as well in upcoming workshops. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, valuable session. And we really hope you. Uh that we are going to meet uh, in person in university. And it is a message for. on NLP workshop in our university. So stay with us, stay tuned, stay connected, and thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure. OK, guys, uh, have a good one, and Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, sir. Uh,